beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed by the time that fire of time passes through, you find out that many people will find out after several decades that they've been building nonsense, building stories, building shadows. But the apostle said, we have not taught you cunningly devised fables. You know, while I sat there, the prayer in my heart, I just said, Lord, just help your people believe you and trust what you are doing in their lives. You don't have to worry about what you are becoming. Just pay attention on the training. I sing praises to your name. Oh God. Praises to your name. Lift your hands and worship him. Oh God. For your name is great. And greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh, God, praises to your name. your hands, lift your voices and let's sing one more time. I sing praises to your name. For access to the wonders of the kingdom. The truth that set men free. For your name is great. I sing praises to your name. I sing praises to your name. Shelanana Masina. Praises to your name. Someday, very soon, you will begin to live the rest of your life in thanksgiving as you watch with shock, as you watch how, how disastrous the life of a man can be when it is not built upon truth. Someday, very soon, you will step back 
and watch life like a movie and have tears from your eyes but not tears of sorrow tears of gratitude someday you will go to the place of prayer and not have a prayer point and say how can i be wicked to ask something else when you have done for me what no man can do what you are receiving is an is is a visa for escape you are you are living you are living you may not appreciate it now you see you may not appreciate it now either because you are not seeing the results now or you have not been allowed to see the other side of disobedience but brothers and sisters i bet you in the name of the lord i want you to believe the things you are learning though we are few we're surrounded by men who have crossed the river before and this is the song I'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. When my eyes behold your wonders. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Yeah, yeah. 
step, Lord. Step by step, you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. My spirit is happy. I found my way out, out of misery. O bangi ji kai kane kai sayabo e ala Just tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. How can I fail? No. Impossible. Impossible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I found my way out. I found my way out. Thank you. Thank him. Thank him. Please don't pretend it mean it from the depth of your heart. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Light me, 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 Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Tonight, oh God, light my life. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light my life. Sing it with faith in your heart. tonight we are here to access the mysteries of the kingdom that will cause us to rise and to prevail Lord I pray that you will help us tonight in Jesus name hallelujah before we sit down if you are sick in your body I want you to just lay your hands there I started feeling the healing anointing right from home I just want to minister to the sick in one minute Shalabha Man de la Cruz Cadibaria. Lay your hands there. I want to take authority over the spirit of infirmity. I stretch my hands right now, inside, outside, online. Everyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of the spirit of infirmity. I command that devil to leave you right now. I release the healing power of Jesus Christ right now. Let that anointing step into your body like a drug and cause perfection right now i command every infirmity every infirmity you go now pains leave now in the name of jesus pains leave now every kind of discomfort in your body this is mount zion i command that devil to leave in the name of jesus hallelujah Please lift your hands. Every spirit represented in this place that is not of God, please pay attention. I'm praying. There is a reason why I'm doing this. I just saw something in the spirit. Anyone here? Under the influence of any spirit other than the Christ. 
in the name that is above all names in this atmosphere of the glory right now i command those devils to go right now you have to leave the word of god is about to come out of them now in the name of jesus everyone inside outside under the influence of any other force every other agency every other spirit every other communication outside of the spirit of the christ i command that devil to go now i dispel that spirit right now distractions through imaginations distractions through understandings that destroy the speakings of the spirit distractions physical distractions orchestrated by spirits the spirit of slumber that caused men to sleep while the word of god comes i cast it out of your life now in the name of jesus christ keep your hands lifted i release upon you the spirit of understanding in the name of jesus as i stretch my hands like a mantle the bible says and open he their understanding a man's understanding can be opened i open yours this night in the name of jesus the christ listen listen to me we'll soon sit down listen you see you don't have to be educated to understand spiritual things that would have been a big disadvantage to those who did not have the opportunity to go to school spiritual things are communicated by the spirit so whether you can speak english or not whether you are at whatever educational level it doesn't matter once you are in an atmosphere where the spirit of god is permitted the word has capacity to birth understanding one more time i stretch my hands to you and i command that whatever makes the word of god barren and unfruitful whatever makes the word of god unfruitful in the name of jesus i take it out of your life whatever makes you to doubt the word whatever poisons your faith so that as the word of god comes you doubt every philosophical imagination every scientific interruption to the quality and the power of the world i command you to live your life right now in the name of jesus christ open your mouth and pray one minute the spirit of understanding is upon me lift your voice and pray the spirit of understanding the ability to receive the ability to comprehend with all the saints the length the height the depth the width the ability to comprehend the ability to comprehend the capacity to receive spiritual things are you praying this is part of the meeting this is a year that you must be blessed it's your year of triumph for you to rise up like the eagle pray understanding 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 your influence is all over me i'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me yeah. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. is upon you tonight brothers and sisters like a hand upon her young 
intruding upon your spirit to make a wonder out of your life. if you can I want you to pay attention to a very deep mystery I want to share with you tonight very deep spiritual mystery open your eyes open your spirit Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to me that's why i will lift up my voice yeah. Yeah. You're my peace. I'm prophesying someone's miracles with you. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will Yeah, yeah, yeah. that this is our month of wealth I want to share with you the mysteries that are responsible for certain strange occurrences in the lives of men and women please I want you to pay attention tonight I want to teach you the mystery of exemption write it down the mystery of exemption my spirit is overjoyed. You see, when the Holy Spirit begins to rejoice through my spirit like this, it's because prophetically he has seen that the word will be received. Hallelujah. You will receive something tonight, I assure you. Hmm. Psalms 50, the mystery of exemption. Psalms 50 verse 15 and 6. Mantles have been given to the church. Mantles have been given to the church. Tonight, Mother Kai's arising from the gates of the church. For the kings to be born, for the victory to be born, for the mantles to return, for the graces to return. Yeah. Ali Ali O, Ali O, Ali Ali O, yeah. of power arising from this place here tonight for the kings to be born for the mantles to return for revival to return for the power to return hey Chant in the spirit. That 
That's what God is doing already. There will be a mighty baptism of mantles tonight. Believe me. Tonight is, is like an initiation into a realm of reality, a realm of possibility. There is such a provision in the kingdom. There is such a provision in the kingdom that men can be exempted. There is such a possibility in the dealings of God with man. Please be seated. Psalms 50, verse 15 and 16. If it's possible for us to have amplified, that's great. Otherwise, no problem. You are immersed in a strong atmosphere of God's glory because of something you will hear. Brothers and sisters, God is not playing games with us. I want us to believe Him. Everyone read as I begin my teaching tonight. Just be sensitive to what the Spirit of God is doing inside and outside. Those outside, please, I want you to understand that there is no difference as far as the reach of the anointing is concerned. One, to read. And call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall... Stop there, 15. Stop there. Go back, please, 15. So, it's a two-way thing. You have your own role to play. Your role is, please keep it there, honor and glorify me then he says call on me in the day of trouble and i will deliver you the shocking scripture that the lord led me to is verse 16 read if you're a christian 16 please go ahead and read are we bible students if God does not open your eyes to this thing, bar, you won't see anything. Believe me, revelation is a spirit. If there is no amount of cramming scripture and Bible study that gives you the spirit of revelation, God has to open the eyes of men. But unto the wicked, the word wicked there is not sinners. The idea there is unto those who are determined not to walk with me. He said, what right have you? We are talking about right here. We are talking about a legal access. What right have you to recite my statutes? I shall not die. I shall not die. I, will, I won't be poor. I will be rich. He said, what right have you to recite it? Everyone is talking, just talking. I won't be sick and you are dying. I won't be poor. It's clear you are getting poor. There is a mystery. Confession is a powerful provision but under certain conditions. See, let me tell you something. Half truth can destroy you like a lie. It can do the exact same thing a lie does to you. That's why Satan is not afraid of using half truth. Because it makes no difference to him. He says, what right have you to recite my status? So everyone is confessing. Wealth and riches are in my house. Everyone is confessing. Oh, I can't get into trouble. I, I can't have accident. It's impossible. And you are watching yourself die per second per second. What right have you? What right have you? That's the point you should circle media, not do wicked. What right have you? To recite my status or take my covenant or pledge on your lips. Talk is cheap, brothers and sisters. But you see, the reason why many believers mock themselves in the presence of the world is we do not understand the systems of the kingdom. Say the systems of the kingdom. So we camp around a dimension of reality and we mock ourselves. And the painful part is we are doing what is right, but the result is not there because it's not complete. God is obsessed with completion. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience if and only when your obedience is complete. What right have you to be exempted? When there is a plague that is released upon people, what right have you to be exempted? 
this one is not free what right that means there is an authorization based on certain things that are done are we together now what right have you to say a bike will not kill me what right have you to say tomorrow i will still wake up alive you know many made boastful statements like that and they are no more today many have said in the name of jesus if by the end of this year i'm not rich except god has not called me the years have passed nothing has happened exemption is a possibility that can be accessed by the saints exemption exemption the quality of being prevented from experiencing woes the quality of being prevented from experiencing the pain the tragedy of people the quality of being exempted or being taken away from defeat the quality of perpetual triumph not necessarily the quality of not being in trouble but the quality of an assured escape as guaranteed as God himself is there such a provision in the kingdom if yes what are the keys to walking in such a reality I have taught us here again and again that our lives are defined by the mysteries we have access to so two people can walk upon the earth and their experiences will be the same remember the scripture i read to you the problem is never the foundation the problem is never that you are not born again but the quality of our lives the same way you have two students in a class taught by the same teacher so the problem is not the teacher in the same institution so the problem is not the institution under the same condition the problem is not the condition but then their results will differ and sometimes sharply that's how it is in life two believers two individuals two families two personalities can be within the same environment yet their results will differ why because the bible says that you arise and shine only when your light comes the light is available to everyone but those who are interested in accessing it and complying with the conditions and the terms if you're with me say amen, amen. what right have you you are making a boastful statement whereas you are seeing what is happening in this nation and you dare have the gods to say it's your year of trial what right you're watching kidnapping and assassination happening you're watching you're watching people being poisoned just air killing people you can't sue the air to court you're watching demons sit on people's destinies you hear people tell you they went to bed and look at the testimony of of that dear lady went to bed and woke up with physical marks not spiritual marks physical marks on her body question what what stops you from being a victim i want to ask you a question what if as you are sitting down right now somebody is chanting your name in the shrine you can't stop them from saying it but the question i have is what right do you have to say i will not be a victim of it what rights do you have to claim that you will prosper i'm doing business it's a joke it's a big joke i have an uncle who is rich another big joke the mystery of exemption job 22 verse 19 i'm a student of the bible i love the bible I don't read the Bible to feel spiritual. I am very serious about my work with God and my study of scripture. I have found it to be the most reliable book. I've read many books in my life. 
it's so disappointing to know many of them are useless to my destiny and now that i've found the one that is useful he said i found your word and i did eat it right and it became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul 29 not 19 job 22 29 i want to share with you a few things from the depth of my heart that can exempt men go ahead and prophesy to yourself as you read this scripture want to read when men like they are saying now across the nations of the earth when men like they are saying now across the continent of africa in nigeria even in this city when men are cast down the bible didn't say they say they are cast they are not confessed it is their reality when men are cast down something you will engage will bring you to a point where for you there will be a lifting up a difference an exemption a separation write this down please everyone it's important to come to the lord's house not just with a bible please always have a bible but always have a good material to write or whatever device you're using but make it serious when you take god seriously he will surprise you when you play games with god and make him look like one of those many things in your life then you will not get results so i'm challenging all of us online those outside doesn't matter when you are coming to the house of god go as though you are going to be mentored taught trained built equipped don't go as if you are going to a museum to watch watch artifacts or watch a zoo to watch animals no you are going for a life-changing encounter are we together so exemption write this down exemption from evil exemption from defeat is a provision in the kingdom that can be accessed exemption from all of those things i mentioned is a provision in the kingdom that can be accessed that means it is within the power of God to cause men to experience exemption. But like everything in the kingdom, as we have been taught here, everything in the kingdom, including salvation, the cheapest expression of God's grace and love, there will always be a condition attached. Please train yourself into an understanding that every time you desire something in God, know that there is a condition attached. Your condition is a demonstration. Fulfilling that condition is a demonstration of your trust in God and your authorization to commit Him to deliver the results expected. Without condition, there is no guarantee whether you are interested in what God is saying. Watch this if i drop a piece of cake on this table right and i don't give you a condition to pick it how else can i gauge and test whether you are interested i drop it here and say if anyone is interested come and pick it your coming to pick it is a demonstration to me that you are interested are we together you will find people who will not come i don't have to be angry with them they are only sending a message to me that i'm not ready to eat cake the same way other people are sending messages i don't want to prosper i don't want to rise i don't want to walk in the anointing i do not want to walk in the fullness of the reality and the possibilities contained in god obedience commits god obedience not to what you want you can't set rules and obey it you obey the conditions prescribed by God you can obey the conditions prescribed by a man and still fail you must obey the conditions prescribed by God 
Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says, God who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake to us through the prophets had in these last days spoken to us through his son. Son. God who in sundry times and diverse manners he spake to us through different people. But in these last days among many other things his chiefest means of communication is his son, the word that he has appointed to be heir over all things. So it is important to trust the word of God. Don't just believe it. Trust the word of God and respect the word of God. Say amen. amen. There are conditions that if you and I keep, we will render the devil helpless and we'll find out that we can walk in the reality of triumph. Not as a cliche, but an experience that will cause many to wonder and see the hand of God and then give him glory and I want to share with you two deep kingdom mysteries that are responsible for compelling triumph number one is what I call the mystery of putting God first Matthew 6 33 the God first principle you can write it like that God dash first principle. The God first principle. Matthew chapter 6. Let's start from verse 31, if you will, media. 31. Let's look at 31. God first principle. Wherefore, take no thought. Other versions say, don't worry. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? 32. For after these things, these things, what to eat, what to wear, the house you will get, the car you will get, listen carefully, the children you will have, etc., your career, whatever. It says, after these things, do the heathen, the Gentiles, seek notice the bible never said they get it he said after these things they seek it didn't say after these things they get it's a cause to seek those things because number one seeking them will never give them to you that's not how to get them the gentiles are getting it wrong they are playing by a wrong formula they seek those things and they never get them it looks like they get them but then you look at what else is taken from their life and it doesn't add up to nothing. Are we together? Then it says, for your heavenly father. Your earthly father usually will forget that you need these things. So God was comforting you. There are many fathers in your life. But the surest one, the dependent, your heavenly father knows. That ye have need of all these things. 33. But seek first. Everybody say seek first. It didn't say seek together. Seek. What does it mean to seek first? If I organize a speech and price, Sam, get ready to stand up. And I say, Sam, you took first. Come out. Do you join him? He comes out alone. Topmost. Preferred. So the Bible says among the many things, go back to your seat. Among the many things in your life, I want to marry, I want a job, I want my enemy to die, I, my, I must buy a car, this duplex is mine, I must possess it, I must receive a miracle alert. I'm not saying those things are wrong. It says among them, come, seek. Hmm. Seek. Isolate God out of the group, bring him out and pursue him. Listen carefully. I'm showing you a very deep mystery. Let me tell you what many of us are doing. We are seeking together. So we say, God, come. Child, come. Civil service, where is he? Come. We gather them like this and say, God, just hold my hand. But Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke. You see that? And so God says, where do I stand here? He said, just be be blessed that you are in my life. And God says, no, my jealousy cannot allow me fight with rent. Fight with whatever. 
you are so obsessed about getting land you will miss a service thinking about land you will never get it that's the secret to high blood pressure are, are you listening to me now it is the secret to all this frustration that people drive themselves and fall inside a, a gutter and not even know there are so many things in your life then it says seek first give us that scripture again the kingdom seek first the influence the sovereignty make God first in your life and his righteousness the word righteousness there is not just the one imputed by faith understand his systems amplified says his way of doing things so if you seek the kingdom alone your obedience is still not complete he said rather than looking for money seek to understand principles seek god when you find him and his kingdom pay attention while others are running trying to look for money while others are running trying to look for breakthrough he said stay with god and understand his systems what is your reward how many of these things will come this is jesus talking please tell me how many all oh, he didn't say some then you now use the money you have and get the rest he said if you seek god isolate god and seek him and stay with his word learning the systems of the kingdom not just religiosity bible study just to cram scriptures understanding the systems of the kingdom he leaves you with a guarantee one guarantee that all these things remember the these things of verse 32 what to eat will run after you what to drink will run after you the cars the houses the children instead of flying from pillar to post finding out and saying, look look i have to do something i'm tired of being buried the bible says seek the kingdom and when you begin to study the systems of the kingdom you will find a mystery that is responsible for fruitfulness it says and when you have found it it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to you do you know why many believers never rise up it's not that we don't read the bible believe me we don't we are not interested in understanding the systems of the kingdom there are many pastors looking for crowd looking for membership yet they will not understand the mystery of growth from the word of god they just they, they run around how are you doing it you how are you doing it like a charm like a genie no sit down there is no man who wanting to to build a tower the bible says who first sit down you know life makes it look like the moment you sit down you are being delayed you you, you get it now so people can come and meet you and say oh god till now you are not working every day you are just searching scriptures look at the foolish person who is talking to you ask him how much is his salary combined you are about to get it now the bible assures you to be added i'm not saying getting a job is wrong but you are settling down no i'm not just interested in a job i'm interested in favor why have i graduated three years and no job because of that i would not just study on a job i will study on favor i'm seeking the kingdom other people are running around and sweating watching football and you are there saying lord how how is it that men rise with favor huh ruth came with her mother mother-in-law and just went to a land with nothing and within 24 hours they left provision for her boaz say leave it as you glean some you think it's just because boaz liked her there was a mystery a woman who was even begging her mother to give birth to other children and she will wait her desire of maybe 25 30 years was answered in 24 hours and you are searching while you are searching your passion is attracting the holy spirit don't think you will just come foolishly because you no 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 the holy spirit responds to passion and hunger he will watch you reading it like a storybook first that's why you will not see revelation and you say i will not be discouraged i have to find this what happened to abimelech 
that made him carry gifts and just gave Abraham. He wanted to carry Abraham's wife. An angel showed up and said, "If you you would you are dead. He didn't say you would die. You touch this woman, you are dead." So as a husband, you are now afraid whether they'll kidnap your wife, and you go back to scripture and say, instead of running around policing my wife like a fool, let me find out what is the mystery. A kidnapper is coming, and that same angel will say, "I've been here for a long time. You touch this woman, don't say." is happening to others you don't know what they believed you define your reality by what you believe i keep saying it is when we will go to heaven that god will show me how many goats were slaughtered because of me how many rams were dragged to another house how many bottles only god my picture is everywhere somebody will download it and shoot that picture till he injures himself when you surround your life with mysteries you will laugh you will laugh and laugh and laugh at a foolish devil you are everything everything, everything is you everything is you you are everything everything is you one more time sing it on him Satan has a system. The economy of the devil is such that he is obsessed. Do you know if you work for Satan, you will still not be idle? Satan is the master of occupying people with things. The only difference is that they are useless antichrist and they have no bearing in terms of producing results. The devil will occupy you with issues that will stop you from paying attention. But hear what Jesus tells Martha. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. But one thing, how many things? One thing is needful to sit at the master's feet. Not to sit down and worry. You must be listening and you must be understanding. You know, let me share with you a little testimony. I hardly talk about all these kinds of things. I remember years ago when God was starting out with us. That time, Zaria was not the way it is now. That time there were so many people pastors reverends apostles prophets i mean everybody was called it was it was zaria was on fire everybody was doing something i remember clearly there were some gentlemen who would come and meet me and say man of god why are you always sitting like this you are always writing studying the bible one even offered to sponsor a, a radio program for me he said no at your level i mean you are supposed to organize healing meetings organize this and, and i laughed you know what i was doing i was searching the mysteries of the kingdom i didn't want to gather people and be a fool and waste their time and now be resentful at those having results i knew it would take time brothers and sisters ask those who knew me then i spent my life studying scripture i could sit down a whole day just searching the mysteries you see this hurry hurry in life is a very bad thing god is a god of speed but he does not rush people he teaches you the precepts do you know i say it with all humility over 90 percent of those people today they are not even in ministry they were passionate about fame my god passionate about pas passionate about briefcase and suit the few times i spent with them irritated me you sat down with them in 10 minutes they were talking about their suit i couldn't afford it i could afford to study the word so i stayed on what i could afford god made it cheap enough for me to stay there there were so many people just the, all this fake and false life oh my shoe is this my dad and i just ignored them with all their nonsense and i'm glad i did just like some of you now while others are running god is saying sit down you are saying god for how long god is saying if you knew where i'm taking you you will start rejoicing because one step in knowledge will cover up 
10 years of foolishness 10 years of wallowing in trouble you know this money thing god has said it's a year of wealth listen carefully to me most people believe that god cannot bless them they really do that's why they don't listen to him if you were having a job sam and you were paid let's say hundred thousand how much is that in one year please help me one point assuming nothing changes in 10 years how i was going to say how old is that how how much is that 12 million because of 12 million you rubbish your 10 years rubbish your 10 years fighting quarreling hating and living foolishly whereas god is saying if you will pay attention to me i can do something to you and bring your 10 years to six months to two months to one month to one week and many of you are god don't just leave me i know what i'm doing you know for many people the apex of fulfillment is when they get a job so i mean what when you are talking like is it please get out i have a job a good job what is a good job what is your definition of a good job when you are employed my definition of a good job is a good job that i have absolute control of if i cannot control it it's not a good job because somebody's wickedness can affect me correct i'm not saying get a job is bad no 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 we prophesy jobs here there are many disciplined diligent employed people don't be lazy and think i'm endorsing you i'm about to attack you from the other side you know me i will have to balance it don't think it's not an endorsement for irresponsibility for whatever reason but i'm i'm showing you the vanity of trusting in things these are the things that destroy us to an extent that they now give somebody a job if the devil does it in such a way that every day you go to church or fellowship that's the day you will be needed most that's a useless and nonsense job i repeat that is a useless and what nonsense job the job that has to make you leave god to do it is a stupid job if you are involved leave it now let men insult me no problem leave it listen i've worked with god small he's reliable listen to what i'm telling you are we together now that's why they get angry when god blesses people because they come and say ah, ah, pastor alpha Abba, what happened three cars two duplexes then the painful part is he didn't build any of them say no this this is i mean I'm, no i can't i don't like this kind whether you like it or not it's a mystery everybody say mystery that's why i call it a mystery a mystery of exemption that where others have to do a lot of things i've said it listen if you're a businessman here listen to me and don't think i'm daft as i speak stop wasting your time to save money to buy land in the kingdom you don't buy land through saving you provoke favor listen i know what i'm saying if well god bless you you can you can save and god will honor it i will even pray on it but you are you will be ready for frustration satan that i know will cause something you must eat out of that money no matter how disciplined you are when you are pushed to the wall you must withdraw something you don't get land you don't get properties by saving psalm 44 verse 3 give it to us please read that scripture and never forget it's just a digression and i'll get back to our subject of discussion and we'll pray i want us to pray tonight help us please psalm 44 verse 3 you are a christian please read it with all your heart one to read uh-huh so how did they get the land now teach somebody this thing and watch him insult you and say you and that your stupid man of god in koinonia you people should continue this nonsense you will beg for bread 
beg for bread see I'm teaching what I'm teaching some of you is very hard even you you are trying to believe it but what they have told you you are now wondering I hope it will work it's like leaving a rope you are about to fall and I'm saying leave that rope and just come and you are saying show me the the quota and I'm saying just leave it if it be thou bid me come what I'm sharing many of you I can't you, you see I'm a spiritual man I receive a spiritual feedback I see how many of you are struggling to believe and agree with what I'm saying it's not like you want to doubt it but you are saying, ah apostle is hard though some are foolishly say it's because you are a man of God you are enjoying was I born a man of God you you join the junk that journalists carry and talk about people and say you are enjoying people give you tithe and give you offering no i'm showing you how to be happy that's how to be happy that you can carry your wife and be happy you can see a jimmy and his wife you can see Ogasho and Shade. there are happy people you can see aaron several pastor alpha there are other angry people you see them and their wives and stress that guy is 35 but even you you would you would think that he's maybe 50. life life squeezed him disobedience added his weight on top and the devil sat on it that's his destiny don't laugh take very seriously what i'm telling you there are people you see them with their wives happy giving god glory giving god praise because they are they are they are accessing the mysteries of the kingdom they know what to do with their children they know what to do with the enemy kai may you know what to do it's a disaster to be confronted with something you do not know what to do the bible says but he himself jesus now knew what to do look at the brother that shared the testimony the one who trekked from um this is a police station or somewhere now you see can you see that in spite of the trekking he now climbed a bike and the devil wanted to kill him it's not fear it's a mystery listen when you trust god you commit him let me tell you something about believing god watch this if this is the door watch this this is a big revelation for someone call this place i'm standing the door to your destiny are we together if you turn around following this door with total sincerity believing that it is god that is leading you god will remove this door and keep it here to make sure you don't miss it let this be a deep word of comfort to somebody stop being afraid who said he must remain there he said i am the door when he moves the door moves so listen listen that's why god protected that brother and brought him to hear the word the devil may have planned god does not give men doors he's the door once you are following him i tell you in your sincerity even in your error he will still say i am the door pass i'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Hold on. When you see God doing the great things that He's doing through my life and through many great men, it's not because we got His instructions 100%, it's because our hearts are sincere. So, while based on what you saw in a vision, I'm supposed to die, God shifts the door and says, Pass. Let the enemies keep prophesying themselves into doom they were right but god was god did you hear what i said they were right their predictions were correct i shouldn't have made it but god is god choose which part to follow right or god i follow him oh i follow him are you hearing what i'm saying i don't walk with god with fear since god revealed this to me i mean i live a very happy life to hell with satan i live a very happy life my heart for god is the chief requirement he will take me to the place of destiny if this is the path god earmarked for me 
and I follow this path but with a heart of sincerity knowing that I seek God my sincerity puts pressure on his reputation he will change that destiny and carry it and bring it here believe me I have worked with him that's the God we serve that's the God we serve that's the God we serve that's the reason why when a man gives you prophecy it's still not the highest thing you can change it he's speaking based on what he saw but there is something between you and God that can change it have you not heard that there were people who somebody saw a doctor saw that woman had lost a child they saw this guy had lost um, whatever and the man would look and say it is true I'm seeing blood you have lost a child but I bring a sincerity between me and God and after nine months a child comes out where did it come out from I am the door door means access the door to everything don't let men fool you and make it look like you have missed it you have missed it you hear people make that arrogant statement you have missed it miss what God my God you are joking he will navigate that door hear what I'm telling you this is why restoration is possible he can take it and turn the direction and bring it listen he is God he does not submit to any man you be God you know be man no you be God, you know, be my Lord. Alpha and Omega, you be God. You be God, oh. You be God, oh. Sing it one more time. You be God, you know, be my Lord. You know, be my Lord. Let's say you be God, oh. You be God, you know, be my Lord. Alpha and Omega. tell you a big secret the key is not perfection the key is sincerity learn this it's not hearing God 100% that guarantees your victory is the sincerity of your heart are you hearing what I'm teaching you tonight God first you touch a man addicted to God you are in trouble I'm telling you you touch a man that has carried himself and said, God, I belong to you. I seek you first. When you seek other things and leave God behind, you authorize darkness to tear down your life. When you say it, people think you are stupid. They think it's just a talk for preachers. No, sir. God first. God always. And you are free. The first key to exemption. Hear me. Is when God occupies every space in your life you will watch trouble come before you like this and pass you as if you're a spirit God first it's not about koinonia it's not about being a civil servant or a businessman there are many foolish career people who threw God away they loved God while they were on campus the moment they graduated they became too matured for god they threw him away and said now we have we have become you know i read i read engineering i read maths i read i read whatever it is lower levels of knowledge they throw god they throw his word they throw everything you never find them talking about god they are even embarrassed you come to their house, you mention God, you say you have come with this God, God the pastor. Run away from such kind of people. Koinonia, hear me. I love you too much. I'm training you to become a wonder. Run away from anybody who does not prioritize God. I don't care whether he's a politician, whether he's a businessman. If it's your husband or wife, you have a work to do. Start interceding seriously. Do you know, when people come and meet me and they say they are ready to marry, even if you hold hamper for me, it's a joke. Do you love God? Are you serious? You don't bribe me with wine and hamper. I'm not an idiot. Do you love God? Because when all else fail, that one thing will bring you back. Job lost everything. And the one thing left, the wife said, leave it all. Job said, yeah, leave God again. 
I lost everything. And you are now saying I should leave God. Why do you speak like one of these foolish women? And God had him. In pain, I hold on to you. Oh, I lost my job, but Lord, I hold on to you. How can I lose you? Are we together? My finances crashed, but I hold on to you. God first. The marriage didn't work out. Still God first. The miscarriage happened. God first. I thought I would not need to go for a surgery, but I went for a surgery. God first. Everybody shout God first. Before that brother, God first. Before that sister, let the brother come and meet you loving God. Don't move around and be saying I'm 30 years. Keep quiet. God first. Don't sit down moving around and say, why wouldn't I get a job? Let the job come and meet you with God. Inseparable. How can I leave him? What will be my reason? That he's not faithful. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. Hey, I, I never, never see, see anyone like you. I never see. Please anyone help me praise like my God. I never see anyone. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. Sit down. Do you know some of you are looking at me strange? As you rise and you see many cheap victories, you will know why we praise God. We gave an instruction here, hold on, that people should dance their way to the next level. There were too many big people, big CEOs, arrogant people who felt too big. Why, why will I make myself a small child? Please, this koinonia, you make people look stupid. The kingdom is for children. When you become too big for the kingdom, you are too big for breakthrough, too big for what? You think I like dancing? Have you ever seen me dance? Do you think I like dancing? But at his word, you become foolish enough to step into that realm. Are we together? God first. That you vow a vow tonight and say, Lord, listen, brothers and sisters, you know, every time I come here, I watch these little children and their parents. I see how many wrong things they do in 10 minutes. And I see how their parents go. I hear Ejimi calling his child. The wife is there. Everybody doing all they're doing. And I'm saying, that's it. That's the message. God first. They don't run to me. They run to their parents. God first. We hate God. That's why we run to him last. We claim we love him. The moment people are in trouble, you run to your strongest point of deliverance, which is your uncle. And you ran and he told you the money has not come yet. You insulted him and left angrily. You went to another auntie to an extent that you went to a stranger on the road and said, sir, if I die now, is it fair? And God, hold on. God is watching. We pray in tongues. We roll around. Are, 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 are you hearing what I'm saying? We cry we do a lot of emotional things but in the midst of real life situations let me tell you god is my witness you are spiritual people listen the every issue of my life my first point of reference is god i have convinced myself that whatever god cannot do in my life cannot be done more. are we together yeah the moment there is trouble and you are calling apostle it doesn't work. You call prayer department leaders. Doesn't work. Call a Jimmy. Doesn't work. Call pastor Alpha. Call him. They are wicked. No. God is with you in the room there. You don't believe it and you are not even interested. How many people go and sit down in the offices of men from morning till evening? They sit by 7 till 10. Then the man just comes and says, I'm tired. Can you come? Ah, yes, yes, no problem. How can I be angry? Because you think that the man can wipe your tears. And you spend 10 minutes in the presence of God. You are grumbling around and talking nonsense. Oh God, you are my. You now see why I sing that song? And I 
will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Listen, do you know, brothers and sisters, if not for God, the troubles I would have entered the fulfillment of the prophecies of the enemy koinonia would have crashed crashed like a plane but for god but for god you will keep watching this ministry rise mysteriously like an edifice it's not because of perfection it's because of god when you know this you will be outspoken about god you think your business will rise because you have capital and so you will keep struggling with it there another ignorant person who respects god will come from nowhere and rise that's why you see when listen listen carefully when men are clapping and saying ah apostle did this i thank god for it oh but me and god we 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 know take god out of my life i'm as useless as this table you are seeing in the presence of anyone i'm not ashamed of it I say it everywhere because every time I declare him, I bring joy to his heart. And he says, son, you are sitting down on so much power, yet you are telling men it's not you. Most of you will not do it. Let me tell you, there are many of you here looking at me. If you carry one tenth of the kind of anointing God has put in my heart, pe people will worship you. You will put your name on your shoe. You will, by now, they would have made rapper with my face. By now, you would have done everything. But for him, how can I dare claim that I am responsible for this result? Will I be honest? I may deceive you and you will believe me. But I know. Listen, after great meetings like this, when I go back home, I have my small chair. I just kneel down. And sometimes you just see me hold the chair and I'm just laughing. I say, "Kai God, but you serve look at how these people are clapping sometimes the seeds that they sow into my life i wait till this my boys that are working for me when they go home i scatter it on the ground and i keep looking at it i say but god you know this thing doesn't belong to me abby it really belongs to you why will somebody walk and you pay someone else and god says it's yours that's your price for believing me god first who deceived you that God is only for preachers. Who deceived you that God is only for pastor's wives? Please hear me. There are people here inside, outside, online. You are not determined to be passionate about God. They ask you, you say, me, I, I take my things easy. I don't overdo anything. You better overdo when it comes to God. Because life will so crush you into pieces. Life is spiritual. When I worship God, I make sure Satan sees me. Worshiping God is a love affair and he's not invited. He's absolutely not invited. I sing this song not because it's a special number. It's a revelation to me. He is my God. The way hope can hold a husband and say my husband. You don't claim what is not your own. This water is my own right the welfare gave me if you come to touch it now i'll say you are a, you are a what what are you thief thief there is a name for that when you claim he is your god you prove it through your intimacy it's not talk what right have you to stand and say let the power of god move what right have you you know, most people think it's just by talking. Now the power of God will move, move, move. You are, you are a big joker. Not with God. Not with God. You must have a track record. Not of perfection. Of passion. Believe me, if you do not have passion for God, forget about doing business with God in this kingdom. I want to ask you a question. When was the last time you took a day off? To spend time with God don't tell me you love him let's examine it you see why it is better for some people to not get jobs because God is having their attention now that they are idle they can spend time but the moment they get up they are now in a hurry making money hurry making whatever and then the times that they now have 
to spend with God, the devil now occupies them with something else. Don't look for what only God can give. It's not missing. Stay with the door, the one who has it, and he will give you. Many preachers come to me and they say, man of God, I want grace. I want to see results in my ministry. And I look at them, I say, so what do you expect to happen? And they just bring out of a bag, you see like four or five different anointing oils. And I'm not against it. They bring it and say, man of God, just breathe on it. I will carry it back. And I look at the person I love. I almost want to tell them, get out of here. You are joking. You breathe a relationship. Is that how you grow your relationship? Time. Intimacy. Spend time with God. No. Spend time with men. Yes. Spend time with liars and psychophants who will clap for you now and betray you. And betray you. Unreliable as they are. They will clap for you as if they love you. As soon as you turn, they will stab you. Listen, I stopped trusting men's sins. Men are as unreliable as the devil. I trust God. So it doesn't matter what men, what they do to me. Everybody say God first. Say it, God first. Bless you. Let's look at the second part very quickly. Our time is gone. The second mystery that commands exemption aside from putting God first in everything is the mystery of kingdom service write it down the mystery of kingdom service I'm going to be very fast please write it and we'll pray kingdom service is promoting the interest and the purposes of God on earth promoting the interest and the purposes of God on earth is an extension of your love and your passion for God. Kingdom service. What is kingdom service? Serving God for a living. Serving God for a living. Kingdom service is not just cleaning chairs. No, no, no. Serving God for a living. There are three dimensions to kingdom service. Maybe we'll just touch one and then next week we can take the other one. I wanted us to finish because we'll start a series. Let's see how God will help us. Number one, the first proof or the first index to measure your kingdom service is soul winning and establishment. Soul winning and soul establishment. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Soul winning and soul establishment. Brothers and sisters, is a jackpot of breakthrough. Look at me. Anybody who tells you working for God does not pay is lying to you. And they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn how many? Many to righteousness. They shall be as the stars. That's their reward for turning many to righteousness. Soul winning is not for evangelists. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. Please give it to us quickly. Proverbs 11 verse 30. Soul winning. As a demonstration of your service to the kingdom. It says, and the fruit of the righteous is as a tree of life. And he that winneth souls, very clearly, he that winneth souls is what? Wise. And the Bible speaking about wisdom says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Long lasting riches. Not 10 years and you are down forever. Wisdom. Wisdom. That when you win souls, it is a service to the kingdom that compels God to bless you. Second Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18 to 20. Very interesting scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 5, quickly please, verse 18 to 20. The Bible tells us that God has given us both the ministry 
and the word of reconciliation. Two things. Both the ministry and all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us, what's the first thing? It's an assignment. He didn't give pastors. He gave all men the ministry of reconciliation. Next verse. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and had committed unto us what the word he didn't just give you the ministry he gave you the word what to say how to get men saved not just the passion and the assignment both the ministry and the word look at me one of the biggest secrets to the growth of any flourishing ministry is soul winning not revelation i don't care how deep that ministry is a ministry that trivializes soul winning will never grow go and search your bible search modern history search today i say it without any sense of shame find out a ministry no matter how deep they are in the things of god healing deliverance prophecy revelation whatever if soul winning is not an outspoken priority you never will find god trusting them with people most people think soul winning is a basic thing in christianity it's for people who don't have anything else to offer is that true what jesus died for everybody says soul winning there are some of you who can win souls and win your way out of every trouble you watch people who have not turned to righteousness you watch people you are coming for koinonia you move around and you watch lives and destinies languishing and going to hell and it doesn't bother you because you feel apostle will come and do it your passion for souls there are people here who God has lifted in strange ways. They make it as a point of contact to both win souls and draw them to the house of God where they will be saved. Shortly, I'm going to make an altar call. And almost everyone who will come out here was invited by somebody. You have won a soul. Let me tell you, every time you bring a soul to God, as he's getting born again, start clapping. It's like taking a check to a bank. While you are clapping for his eternal salvation, clap for yourself too. Because the devil is watching. You have saved the soul and authorized yourself for exemption. A woman can win her way out of barrenness. That you sit down and say, Satan, you claim you will not give me a child. I need three children. I will win five souls for every child. And you go out and you win five and say, that's my firstborn. Let's see the devil that will stop your womb from taking it. If you don't have womb, the baby will grow anywhere. After all, germs grow anywhere. Fibroid grows anywhere. Growth grow anywhere. It doesn't matter where the baby grows. The most important thing is that he comes out after nine months. Are we together? Koinonia is heavily protected, among other things, by the mystery of soul winning. I have passion, genuine passion for souls. Not fake that pastors just do and cry. Genuine passion for souls. You are talking to somebody. He says somebody else has, talk, has spoken to me. He says it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That somebody spoke to you does not mean you were born again. I'm still talking to you. Koinonia, hear me. I challenge you. Begin a serious project of soul winning. Instead of gossiping on Facebook. Discussing matters of people that are not your business writing things about men of god somebody i was i was i was shown somebody who tried to write a, a, some things about me thinking he knows me and i said look at you see this foolish people he would have used that time and that unit to win a soul do you know the joy in the heart of the father when one person comes to stand before jesus listen every time we pray for crowd god sees my heart it is never for a name it is never to build an empire i'm smart enough to know how to be famous i'm intelligent enough to be able to write books souls souls that when you win souls it's on your record 
the Bible says there is joy in heaven since you got born again let me tell you it's a shame as a believer if right from the beginning of this year till now you have not contributed in anyone's coming to the kingdom it's a shame you are doing the same thing an irresponsible man does to not bring food to a house the same way we say a man is stupid for not bringing food to his house imagine a man married and comes home empty-handed and the wife is saying honey where's the food he said, food for what that's exactly what someone does if he doesn't win souls you watch people go to hell the primary assignment God has given me is not just to build and equip believers you have to save them first before they are established Facebook text messages you can find a way of reaching a soul genuinely don't just say I think he's saved and talk to him and say well you see you have to be serious with God think about it then you go back smiling you didn't save him you only informed him that his life is not going well it's a different thing if he rejects but give people a chance preach to your parents preach to your loved ones you see how we celebrate so winning here many of you when people give testimonies of cars I got a car I got a plane you clap but they say someone got born again somebody just knows oh that's all right let's hear the real testimony which one is the real one the car that will perish have you not grown spiritually enough to know how the the mundanity and the vanity of the things of this life that's why we pray for souls that's why as much as possible as much as god grants us grace we keep making altar calls even if nobody comes let there be a witness in heaven are we together some of you that's what you did that god lifted you that's how this ministry started we would pray for people those times before they got admission when people came that was before they started post ume i remember as soon as people come we're like holding them and the next thing they get born again they get filled with the holy spirit and we create room for them to be established if you heal men and don't save them they are going to hell are you hearing what i'm telling you if you give if i give you money and you are not saved where are you going to don't say heaven don't let anyone lie to you you are going to heaven you are you don't have jesus in your heart please don't let any theologian deceive you you are going straight to hell say hell there is a real place like that people left this morning they are there right now don't let people fool you and make it look as if the moment you're a nice person you go to heaven being nice does not take people to heaven if you cannot live your lifetime you deserve to go to hell if you live your lifetime without acknowledging the one who brought you you spent 70 years of your life and paid no attention to god this night i want to challenge you your phone is full of many names that are not born again you are looking at them and you are watching them god has given you access and influence over their lives many of our loved ones are on their way to hell we know it we know they are on their way to hell our roommates are on their way to hell our work people are on their way to hell our friends your husband is on his way to hell your wife some of our stubborn children are on their way to hell you can start interceding don't say any man cannot be saved that's the talk of the devil i have seen impossible people get saved there's nobody I, I, I don't believe that can be saved. Do you pray for souls? Or do you pray for money? Some of you are surprised. We are supposed to be talking about wealth. I'm showing you a jackpot of financial prosperity. God is not a, a, a journey that you crack like a charm. Souls. For as long as there is breath in me, I will keep leading people to Jesus preacher or no preacher i will make sure they love him i will make sure they love him stop discussing other things with people and don't probe their salvation people come to you and say we want to marry you talk about every other thing there is a way you can discern oh this guy is saved but there's a way you know this brother 
is not saved and he is about to marry a lady he's inviting satan officially to be the lord of that home you have to save it you are not just saving a man you are saving every child that will come you know believers don't be too western to be obedient take the foolishness of the word of god and be serious on tuesday you are coming for prayer department prayer band meeting is the only department that allows other people to join them you come alone you leave and you are going and you know that somebody so he, he may not be born again dear boy can be a starting point it takes a while to save souls you may not save them overnight but start introducing them to the atmosphere of god's presence the same way some of you now introduce someone here doesn't matter what religion doesn't matter what age doesn't matter what rest what, what race i have little respect for any man of god that does not pay attention to the simplicity of soul winning i don't care what you have the greatest people when all is said and done he that winneth souls is wise you have no authorization to prosper and to ex be exempted from the the ills and the perils that will keep languishing men when you are not a soul winner are you blessed we'll stop here next week we'll take on the others but listen to me very carefully tonight one of the many prayers you'll be praying is to cry for grace to have a personal revelation of soul winning i don't want you to just get emotional over what i'm saying you don't have to get tracks and move around it is your lifestyle huh there are certain businesses that in nigeria when the businesses came out people were too grateful to keep quiet they ran to people by themselves have you heard about this ah my life is changing and the person say i'm not listening you must listen i'm not going anywhere i love you too much to leave you that's the same way that's the same way you talk to somebody are we together the person is laughing and says see you and this your god team we did it before we did this god team before and tell him you need to go back god is not a project that you do before and leave many of the people you preach to will tell you they were once saved there was no follow-up system and no structure for establishment so when the cares of life came upon them in anger if god was god why did he allow my wife die if god was god why did he allow me to fail if god was god why did he allow me to do this i left god since and they say it explain the gospel to them let them know that there is a difference between an encounter with god and understanding his principles many people think the moment i come to jesus christ everything will change and be careful how you win souls the basis of winning souls is not just to prosper them it's a submission it's a covenant of surrender and submission when two people are getting married they ask them serious questions will you be there for one another whether things go well or not they answer yes to everything and they mean it don't don't lie to people of course in christ you have access to these things but train people to love god more than things and situations don't don't make people think immediately i run to god everything will change and then an attack starts on account of their decision and they no longer can stand there are many people who have been of other religions here some of them are here listening to me they have made bold decisions for jesus and some of them we have had to come in even as a ministry to shield and help them because they they have gone and some are still going through heavy pain they deserted them financially left them for whatever reason but because they were saved well they were saved to love and live for jesus i love you jesus i worship and adore you i just want to tell you that i love you more than anything before i make an altar call while everybody is seated i want you to cry pray while you are seated cry to god with every passion in you and say lord 
I am sorry for ignoring souls. I've been trying to do ministry and I've watched people go to hell. There are people who if I had spoken to them last week, last month, pray. Lord, you gave me an anointing. I've been joking with it. Just throwing people on the floor and not paying attention to their salvation. You gave me a ministry. I've been playing games with it. Watching people look warm and unserious with God. Brothers and sisters, let's be sincere with ourselves. That's not how we started. That's not how we started with God. We started with the simplicity of passion for souls. Pray. Talk to God. They called you pastor's wife and you were ashamed and you stopped. Ah! They insulted you and embarrassed you and you were ashamed. Then you stopped. Outside are you praying? Lord, fresh passion to engage the mysteries that will exempt me from trouble, from the grip of witchcraft, from destruction. That my life will cause men to love God. My life will cause men to be on fire. How can I be in an environment? No one is changing. No one is serious. No one's prayer life is rising. No one's word life is growing. Never transfer the message to anybody. You've never bought a Bible for anyone. Never done anything to contribute to the salvation of anyone. You're not acting as a genuine Christian. Believe me, brothers and sisters. Yet you want the anointing. Yet you want to be invited for crusades. Do you want the name or do you love God? Do you want the fame or do you love God? Do you just want the prestige and the persona? Or are you genuinely passionate? In this place, here and now, Lord, your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign in our lives, in our homes. Your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign. Through my life, through my life, I let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. Through my life, through my life, tonight, I let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign, above all, above all, your kingdom reign. about fame and go for souls and watch the wonder God will do with your life forget about complaining for a husband or a wife and go for souls forget about the witchcraft in your family I know you were born with witchcraft I know there are practicing people who are manipulating your destiny leave them alone and go for souls and let me see the charm that will tie you down souls don't just pay tight. Don't just sow seeds. Win souls. Win souls. Win souls. You are too big to win souls. You are too big to be exempted. You are too big to turn many to righteousness. 
you are too big to receive the defense of God against the vicissitudes of life but apostle I'm a shy person that's why there is grace for you but apostle I'm not a man of God the great commission is not for men of God my friend Prayer point number two. Lord, every soul appointed to be saved through my life. In the name of Jesus, I begin to seek them and pursue them. Every soul appointed. There is somebody that must escape hell because I am alive. Lord, where are they? Reveal them to me and give me the grace to haunt them. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. Who have you appointed to be saved through my life? Lord, who have you appointed to be saved through Koinonia? Who have you appointed to be saved, to be serious with God through our teachings? Jesus said, all that you have given me, I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition that scriptures may be fulfilled and none is lost and none is lost hallelujah before i make the altar call i want you to take two minutes find somebody that is serious and i want you to intercede for your family members and say i stop them from going to hell lord they can't go to hell i know as at now my father is not yet a christian but lord eternity in hell have mercy pray my brother my husband my wife pray for those who are saved too and are not serious there are people saved but not serious saved but not passionate Save them, O oh God. We release angels, angels of salvation. Draw them to meetings. Draw them to crusades. Draw them to meetings. We release angels of salvation. Lord, give them dreams. May they have encounters with Jesus in their sleep. May they have an encounter with Jesus in their offices. It's time for their salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are rounding up. We are going to pray for salvation through encounters. That's the strange dimension the Spirit of God is moving right now. Where men by themselves are in a room, all of a sudden they are caught up. An encounter that will rattle every stubbornness. Lift your voice and cry. Lord, we release encounters. This night, dreams. This night, visions. This night, encounters in the beer parlor, encounters in public places, encounters in business board meetings, encounters. While he's preparing to go for armed robbery, encounters on the road, encounters with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. You are going to pray and say lord i have made you first in my life and i'm committed to serving you therefore i invoke exemption upon my life 
I no longer will cry their cry. Prophesy it. I no longer will go through their pain. No. Glorious exemption from poverty. Glorious exemption from sickness. Glorious exemption from failure. Are you praying? May that mystery be activated in my life. May that mystery be activated. Surely they will gather. But by this mystery, they will scatter. They will come in one way. And the Lord will disperse them in seven ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head. I want to speak to you. I prophesy upon everyone here. As you are laying your hands. The same way a mark was put by God to Cain. And said by this mark. You, anyone who sees you will leave you in peace. He did it to a sinner. Cain. He put a mark right now in the name of Jesus. As you are placing your hand on your head. Shadaka to katabara. I place a mark of exemption upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. If the devil is looking for men to kill in a car accident, it will not, it will be minus you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me when the devil is fermenting trouble to destroy families, cause scandal between husband and wife, cause scandal between pastor and whatever. In the name of Jesus, minus you, you are exempted in the name of Jesus. Hear me. The same way God has exempted this ministry from financial turmoil and recession, I pray upon you, beginning from this night, every time a man is looking for who to favor, I command them to find you. Keep your hands. I'm still praying. If there is any mark just keep your hands if there is any mark upon anyone's life that brings bad luck that brings enemies that brings the wrong people that brings the wrong situations the wrong atmospheres i'm speaking to you right now that mark is erased forever 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 erased forever erased forever that mark upon your ministry that misrepresents you that mark upon your life every sincere thing you want to do men see it in another way that's the mark of the devil every time you are doing things genuinely but people keep misunderstanding you i cancel that mark from your life now if a jimmy is a landlord of an estate and you are trusting God to save 30 million to buy a house and he looks at you and assuming you didn't know he was a landlord he just says Kai I want to bless you and someone just whispers to you and say that's the landlord the awareness that is a landlord does something you say ah sir good afternoon I, I'm not even because you are aware something just opened you up to the potentials in him that he can compress a 10 years journey in a moment this is the God I serve the Bible says the word of God is quick. Shout quick. Not slow. It may look slow until God decides to shake himself and say, now let me lift Kenny. Now let me lift this. And you are surprised. Even you, the benefactor, there are sides to the equation of greatness no man can explain. It's a mystery. You just know I prayed. I did this from A to B to C. I don't know what happened there. I just know that a finger manipulated this. Are we together? Believe in the Lord. Many believers don't believe God. 
many believers it has to be in this order believe in the lord your god believe what about him believe that he is god you can believe he's a deity that's not the information required for your greatness you can believe that he's not a man satan too is not a man many other spirits too are not men so there's nothing special about believing that he's not a man you must believe that he's the mighty god and you must believe in his ability i don't know how to make you see this look let me tell you when you focus on god and who he is and his might you will turn back and see the possibility of your situation shrinking before him and then you will be brought to a point where you will agree lord you can change my life i believe lord you can wipe my tears there are many faithless people just because they are holding their bibles and speaking what is written there they think they believe no it's a conviction lord i trust you lord i believe you that's why he left us the word of god to help us believe him the word of god is a commitment from god to you is 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 a manifesto is to give you room to vet him that means if you have any fears as to why you should not believe him he still leaves the word are we together believe in the lord your god by doing so you shall be established so he says be convinced and convicted about who god is and what he's able to do second timothy chapter 1 and verse 2 says but i know whom i have believed he says i am persuaded that he is able i am persuaded that he is able hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says for without faith it is impossible to please god listen he says for he that cometh to god like you have come now he says you must come believing that he exists and then that he is a rewarder let me see how many of you came from far if you came from far let me see your hands how many of you honestly had quite a stressful journey coming now do you think please drop your hands thank you do you think that God will watch you live wherever you heard the, someone came from Ghana someone came from Maiduguri so within and outside this nation people coming there are many people connecting from around the world do you believe if you were God will you sit on your throne and watch someone almost have an accident and for 12 hours come and sit down some of you have been here probably since 12 in the afternoon or two or three and then as God you sit down and then say okay share the grace may God bless you I don't know the God you gave your life to but the one I gave my life to is a serious God it's a very serious God we are used to people playing games with our lives God is not just a trustworthy God he is too serious that he gave his son to die and then he will play games with your life no sir he's a rewarder he's a rewarder let me tell you something you've heard me say it if you ever find yourself coming here to koinonia that you are right here safely alone is a sign that half of your challenges have gone um, now uh, you would think i'm saying it just because i'm the man of god here you decide to come here and see the attacks that will arise money that you are saving will disappear all of a sudden oh, every to some of you the morning to come you are not even yet sure whether you will come it's a spirit believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god sister believe in the lord your god my brother believe in the lord your god concerning your admission believe in the lord your god concerning the baby i know it's five years but believe in the lord your god believe concerning god turning your life around you need more than a job you need breakthrough you need favor if you get a job of fifty thousand, you are still backward 
because you should have been working for the past 10 years so now the issue is not just a job of 50 or 100 thousand that god can you shift my what would have been the backlog of the past shift my 10 years to enter my september and wait for me there that i can enter september and I, I, it will look as if september is 10 years put together One of the greatest ways breakthrough comes is the manipulation of time. Read your Bible and see what God did with time when it was time to visit people. He made the sun to stand still. He made the sun to go backward. Are we together? He did something to time. When you lose time, you have lost everything. Believe in the Lord your God. Number two. Please, let's go back to um, Second Chronicles. He said, believe in his prophets. Listen carefully. His prophets here doesn't just mean someone that prophesies. His prophets here doesn't even mean someone who is not fake. That means someone who is real. That's not what he's talking about. He said, believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. To prosper means to do well. He says, believe his prophets. His prophets are not just people who prophesy. His prophets are not just real men of God. <clears throat> Listen carefully. This is where we miss it. You must learn this. His prophets here are not just men who are doing the biddings of God. It has nothing to do with maybe someone being real. His prophets here means the person sent to you. Listen, listen. The Bible, um, come Sam. Come darling. Look at this. I'm Elijah. And I'm going to the house of a widow of Zarephath. Are we together? Don't you think on my way going, I'm going to meet other people who have problems. So I meet a gentleman who has a problem and I just greet him. How are you? Where is the house of the widow of Zarephath? He's shaking me but doesn't receive anything because I'm not sent to him. I'm a prophet. I probably met other widows. Elijah probably met other widows lamenting and he said, Oh dear, you mean it? You mean this how your life is? Sorry, eh? And he kept going. The same way Jesus saw ten lepers. The same way Jesus would see people and touch one and stand up and go there is a man sent to you there is an anointing sent to you listen i know that many people will not like me for what i'm telling you not every anointing can bless you generally speaking by opening your heart i mean at the anointing a portion to change your destiny it's true hear what i'm telling you and then god will bless you There is an anointing, a portion. There is a grace designated. Let me tell you, happy are you the day you come into the environment where the anointing that was sent for you. Do you know, let me tell you this, and I tell you this honestly, my heart is passionate when it has to do with blessing people. But I have met people in my life that I just prayed for them just for praying sake. But I knew in my spirit, I wasn't sent to them. Of course, you won't tell them so they don't feel bad. But you know. But I've seen others. I couldn't even wait for them to share their challenges because I know. I know. The anointing is sent to you. So believe his prophets. Are we together? There were many widows in Zarephath. Elijah was looking for just one Habba prophet. What of other women? <clears throat> I love them. I can pray. I can intercede. May God bless you. Do A, B, and C. But I'm looking for a woman of Zarephath. Where is she? Finally, you find her, and his clash is not even ready for you. She's doing something else. The prophet would have been angry to say, I spent time to come here. You don't even know what you are missing. I'm on my way going. But because he was sent, he had to stay. His assignment was to change her life. 
when you find the anointing and the prophet that God has sent over your life and your situation let me tell you you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the as if satan does not exist it's it's not just this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say the most important thing is god yes you are right but you are wrong the most anointing is anointing what is there what is so special about this man of god this is what i'm teaching you now people are sent to people even the word of God is sent. He sent his word like a messenger. Meaning until that word is sent, you can stay there. But when the word comes like a messenger, angel Gabriel left other believers around earth and was directed to one person, Daniel. All that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies. He would have been angry to say, I'm going to someone else. Mm -mm. He said, Daniel, I am come to give you understanding. Are you the only one? I am come to give you understanding. Jesus is appearing by the road. Saul is on his way to Damascus. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says there were other people with Saul. God would have been fair enough to at least give them something. And then he isolates one person and discusses with the person the rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down they just got up to clean themselves and say kai now well, what is all this one now whereas one person has that encounter hmm. sent 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 the word that changes my life sent i have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets and my god did my life change Tonight, let me tell you, if you can believe, this, he said, believe his prophets. I know you are a businessman. I know you are educated. I know you are smart. But there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper. They are solved from the realm of the spirit. It's only the results you receive here. Are we together now? Believe in his prophets so shall you prosper write this down please his prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you you must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from god to you and one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man don't just believe for nothing you have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man what is so special about this man why should I believe him why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God investigate the dealings of god study the track records of his results i think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that no give them room to study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing how do you believe his prophets open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions don't just receive the grace alone instructions many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout Jesus. You've been singing a song before you came here. You, there was Jesus more than 10 times in that song. You kept shouting, Jesus, Jesus, lover of my soul. And nothing happened. And here you are sitting and a man is saying, just shout Jesus once. If you don't have this revelation, you can sit down and say, please, what is, we are not children here. What is all this nonsense? He told Naaman, go to Jordan watch seven times naman said me jordan there are clean rivers somewhere 
and the small girl said, you are the one in trouble. If you don't go and wash, you can go back with your leprosy. Two scriptures and then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 31. and Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians it says and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and also what his servant Moses God performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, look up please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. That means, I can talk to you without the cloud, but I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. He says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick cloud. So sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one? God does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the, the leftover of unbelief. Because you see, some of us are coming from different Christian experiences. Some of us have been, our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology, all kinds of philosophies. Some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of God, prophets and whatever. And chances are that when you come like this, usually you will just add the man of God to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them. And God says not so. And he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in Mount Zion. Are we together? It's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your own belief immediately. Readjust your own belief while the devil is trying to lie to you. Can your life be changed all of a sudden? The, the power will touch the person near you. This somebody you shook hands with, turn to your neighbor and say this and that. So you know that the person, uh, the person can be acting. It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. You must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now 
I said, I am amazed at how people in Africa and Nigeria trivialize success. I am shocked at how people um, believe that success is about luck. It's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like I think these people are just fortunate. Is that true? I, I, these were my contemplations while I was coming. Listen, there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake. No. Including the testimony you are about to have. That gentleman from Ghana, he did not just press this thing and found my name. No, 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 no. The anointing that is sent with that word works day or night. Are we together now? There are many testimonies just like his, that gentleman. You see that now? Someone will tell you I was sitting and I had a dream. How about those who buy new phones, brand new phones, brand new phones, and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside? How do you explain that? A new phone, not new, uh, what do they call that thing? Not new memory card. I'm not talking about new memory card. A new phone that you bought it, tear rubber, you are the one who opened it. Then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question. Who, who now, who, how do you explain that? Listen, listen. We live in a world that is not natural. It only manifests the spiritual naturally. The, 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 the earlier you got this, the better. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. All that you see in this world is only a reflection. Say reflection. The real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit. Whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory. Nothing happens that is physical. Are we together? One of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight, among the many miracles we desire is finance. Oh, Nigerians, finance. You want to talk a good news to any honest Nigerian right now? In this day and age, as we transit into the ember month, no matter, speak about their spiritual life, yes. Speak about their love for God, passion, new depths, but please don't ignore that other one. Just even if it's in passing, just say something about it. Finance. Many people want to see financial breakthrough. Many people are working and they are trusting God for breakthrough. And remember, the strange thing about finance, do you know why, listen, I'm not talking about money, we're going to pray shortly. Do you know why many believers are poor? Because in the kingdom, finance is warfare. Money is not just an instrument to live well, it's a weapon. See, listen. Oh dear, what's it? Ecclesiastes 7. Let me just talk a little. You was... Uh, I, I didn't plan to say this, but Ecclesiastes 7, verse 12. Let me show you something. May God give somebody deliverance right now. Read it, read it. One to read. For wisdom is a defense. Uh huh. And money is a defense. Just stop there. So we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense. Now look up. When the Bible says you have a weapon, what is a weapon? Something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack is that true if you give me a weapon like a shield i use it for defense and the bible says one of the many weapons money is one of them and the bible says those weapons are not carnal the word not carnal means they are not man-made but my brother, my sister, this thing is man-made. It was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because this is man-made. But the Bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal. He said it is mighty through God. That means there is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means this thing is only the body. The same way human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it 
you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says believe is prophets there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this This is what we chase all around because we think this is paper. No, this is not, this is paper, yes, but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit. This is what you need to understand. So the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave no matter how hard working you are. You can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will, you know it's going it's going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses money is a defense it can defend the gospel it can defend a man and the bible says all those weapons they are not carnal So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please, are you getting what I'm saying? If you can understand this alone, at least even if you don't know how it comes, you already know that it doesn't come by itself. These are the mysteries that surround our kingdom. You ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom? My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. This is a spiritual realm. You don't have to be a Christian to believe it. You just have to be alive. This is a spiritual realm. Animals know it. Plants know it's a spiritual realm. That's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it. You don't leave it open. You cover it. Because what happens there is none of your business. Now you just cover it and watch it happen. And it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down. A little seed. When you planted it, it had no roots. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, nor how a woman, how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child, you know, and all of that, so also you don't know the way of God. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities, listen, that are beyond the realm of the eyes. Are we together? Most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain. Unfortunately, in this kingdom, there are things that you may not be able to explain. When people come here to testify, you see me sit quietly and I watch. And many times I'm in shock as I watch the immutability of God's power in the lives of people. The same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we're sending you to us to get a job Haba, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who i need whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal That you're sitting and someone says i'm thinking of you who do you think you are no i want to help you i want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> this one is not brain work now this one is not one plus one i told you one plus one plus god is equal to whatever he says the answer should be 
one plus one is two but one plus one plus god is not equal to two it's not even equal to ten thousand is equal to any answer that god puts there so one plus one can be equal infinity god said so are we together now i'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all. When you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the Holy Spirit worked with you till you came today, you should know already that there is a God in heaven. Are we together now? Brothers and sisters, I present to you this same God who can change your life, who will change your life. I'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others. Wow, this is how God has changed this lady's life. Wow, we are soon going to pray. You must have a desperation and say, Lord, I didn't come tonight to clap for anybody. I left my journey wherever. Lord, I know that you will visit me. And I hold on to the horns of the altar. While you are sitting, the devil is telling you, remember tomorrow by 12, your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer i believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him i believe him i believe he can change my life in one minute i want you to just mention everything you are trusting god to do tonight go ahead Lord, I believe you for this. I believe you for that. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family talk to jesus even if you find yourself crying just continue to speak lord you are able change this situation turn my academics around lord turn my finances around lord i'm in a situation right now where only you the god of heaven can arise turn my ministry around lord i'm confused i don't even know where to go right now I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Kill unbelief as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving, it says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Oh 
Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around. Something has happened. The signs and wonders are no more like before. The revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before. I'm here for a turnaround, oh God. My prayer life has died. I'm here for a reawakening. I no longer fast. I no longer pray. I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around. Walk on any unbelief in my heart, oh God, and take it out tonight. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear, Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted now listen this is why he anointed me because there is an agenda but that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart it takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart to proclaim liberty now i like this one to proclaim to declare that the time has come for you to walk free it says and the opening of prison my brothers and my sisters there can be men physically walking but they are in prison next verse Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. So the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state. No. So anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive i've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed you are not free you are not free at all if you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken you are still not free are we together now thank you jesus christ 
Let me give us one last prayer point. Father, every desire I brought here tonight, I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakatos. Talato shabra hasikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barateke barakos. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness. Oh! comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed right now, speed, let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it, it's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone, it's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years, in one month, receive that grace. I energize your spirit, man. Speed. When speed comes upon a family, you will see it in the result. When speed comes upon your spiritual life, 
when speed comes upon your academics i'm praying again the angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed i release that grace let that anointing come upon you speed speed in the name of jesus christ speed Now, now listen. Fire in the spirit has many significance. Fire, this fire is a mystery. It was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here. Fire does not run away from any element. Fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit. Whether you put metal, the metal will be hot. Wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it up it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct so you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of Jesus I'm stretching my hands right now Spirit of the Lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of Jesus I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire
Jesus. The fire is still blowing. I declare any chain, if there is anyone under the sound of my voice, and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire. I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace. I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three. May that fire locate chains in this place now. One, two, three. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Madam, please clear the way for me. This women, tap this women for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it will surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. He's leaving my hands and is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? My CV. Your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, 
the Lord is showing me all day. Sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter congratulations. Listen. And I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you. Except God is not God. If this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace, I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace. You must testify. I declare whatever it will translate to, whether a job, whether increase, whether promotion, I command it, I declare it, I decree it. In the name of Jesus, I command it, I decree it, I declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hold the hands of this lady. This one. Hold the hands of this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands right now. And I declare, it's time for your family to rise. I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy. And I decree and declare, every embargo that holds onto that family, I command that it's gone now. In the name of Jesus, it is gone. I curse the power of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And there are many of you, there is no grace on the works of your hands. I look and in the spirit, I don't see the blessing of the Lord working. That's what is responsible for hardship. It's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this. But in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the spirit of God. And I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. Whatever it is you are involved in, God is about to bring grace upon it. I stretch my hands right now at the count of three. May the fire of God come through your hands into your life. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever has not been working in your life, I force it to work right now. Receive that anointing. I force it to work now. Inside, outside, I force it to work now. Those following online, I pray and I speak whatever it is that you are doing. I declare the blessing. I activate the blessing upon the work of your hand. I take away hardship from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take away hardship from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ya bone na kawo sujada ne na kawo sarkin sala the Lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is. I'm seeing fire, still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically. You will feel fire burning and ideas. The Lord is birthing things, is is a birthing in the spirit. I release that grace right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. All those who must see. Show them, oh God, where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life. I decree and declare, receive that grace, the grace of an open eye, the grace of an open vision. May the Lord show you where the resources of your destiny is. 
may the Lord show you where your helpers are in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah this the prayer is for everybody eh? but this particular prayer now is for ladies the Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed outwardly you are beautiful you are good looking you are virtuous you are wonderful but in the realm of the spirit is not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in this in the realm of the spirit a man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful the gate was beautiful but the man's life was nonsense there are many people you can stand i'm, I'm saying everybody but this is specifically for our sisters and it's not just the issue of marriage i'm not talking about marriage alone that there is a fragrance a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life but many of you physically they look at you and you look like you are beautiful you are this you are that but in the realm of the spirit there are powers sitting on people's destiny in the name of jesus lift your hands i want to pray for you that that force that veil must be torn in the name of jesus ah, i'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people especially our sisters i declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is i change it now in the name of jesus i change it now in the name of jesus listen a man's destiny can be exchanged it's true have you not read in the bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives a man's destiny can be a shadow of something else you know you are alive but this is not your life you know that you are living another person's script i'm saying it again in the name that is above all names sir come i don't know you but i want to pray for you sir god is going to turn your life around uh, you see this prayer that i'm saying generally this prayer sir is for you you are a shadow of your life of your is your dad where did he come from from high in the air from high in the air from high in the air daddy i'm going to pray for you this is not just about your leg huh this is about your destiny i want to pray for you hold my hands up father in the name of jesus christ i declare Entes kalabra hafas kata barakoto supriya takatas mande kres koda hashabari katos kada natos kada natos kada mashada kata empre kete koto koto bat sada balakata shapres kete 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 balakata shapriya takata in the name of Jesus anyone who has exchanged your destiny sir I decree and declare restoration now. You are the daughter, hold my hands. I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady, huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life. Huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? I'm married, but where's that? Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now. Yes, sir. 
Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Good things and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil, you are a terrible lady, but it's not true. You have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter, the Bible said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. You can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you. And people end up fighting you. You bought something for them and they end up, you are saying, what is this? I pray for you and the person says, so you are trying to say I'm the one who is not spiritual. It's a spirit. My dear, I want to pray for you. Eh? This thing is not just about your marriage that is, you know, things have gone wrong. You are a wonderful lady. Eh? Favor will come close to you but then never enter your life. Yes, sir. What yes, do you sir. do? I'm working in a security. Uh, you are a security? Yes, sir. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. I'm running my master. You are running your masters. Yes, my dear, do you believe God can change your life yes, now? Yes, sir. I believe, sir. Hold my hands. To appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying put this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen, I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, Daddy sir, I'm praying for your daughter and your presence. This lady will come here. And give a testimony that even you as a father who said this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God. I want to pray a very serious prayer. Because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare. I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny, I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, if the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sent your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job. That on Sunday you're on your way going to church, your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man? If you gain the, what is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again, in the name of Jesus, may my God relocate someone here by the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, they will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. 
go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians, you go to embassies and see Nigerians, they want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that cement right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincing, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send it. You can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jakes is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside. We'll walk to your projector stand. Overflow two. You'll also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three. Walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you, to touch your family members. You can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it. And ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourselves very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not in your PR department, you can join them. 
and then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. In the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing. Pastor Jax Ejimi, there. Um, Pastor Alpha, Benga, Overflow, one. Pastor Femi, Promise, Overflow, two. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people. God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you, just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now.
darkness is leaving, breakthrough is coming. Heaven touches earth in this place. In this place. Oppression is lifting, shackles are breaking. Heaven touches earth in this place.
song will be. That's what my 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 song will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 in one minute those following from any nation of the world i'd like you to just pray we're just going to pray and speak over this go ahead stretch your hands we're praying on this request father let your people return with testimonies in the cross, Sazia Sahasa Barakatosha Brada Gadabaladaba Rakata Branda Gadabaladabosh Ebratos Kadabrandi Gadabaladabosh Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. Lekato Shata Pratekato Sabrede Gadiba Rakata Parata Paratosa de Brede Gadabaladaba In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you these prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. 
Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that abound. Father, we give you praise for there's nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable lord you will bend things tonight in the name of jesus Amen. you will change things tonight in the name of jesus you will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit you bring healings you bring deliverance you will bring breakthrough financial breakthroughs in the name of jesus you bring changes lord death supernatural deaths will be cancelled by the power of your spirit lord we give you praise we give you glory Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. Yeah. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any requests to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life i declare by the hand of god almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of jesus christ what you cannot do for yourself i ask my god to do it for you in this season If you're a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. Are we together now? 
and in the name of Jesus I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah I decree and declare may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season in the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you heard the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to which that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ if there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God that means if God does not step in for you you know you are in trouble I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life come out of that trouble now whether it's a financial trouble whether it's whatever come out of it now in the name of Jesus Christ every attack on your destiny I decree and declare from tonight by the assignment of angels we ward off that attack in Jesus name whoever has been destined by God to help you rise and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of Jesus I declare I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year. I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ any door that was once open and is now closed I reopen it in Jesus name I hope you believe everything I'm saying please believe it with all your heart I pray for every student here I don't know what challenge you may be having or I don't know what you are trusting God for in the name of Jesus I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them I don't care what needs to be done let it be done to move you in the name of Jesus Christ I say it again let it be done to move you
there are some of our young ones that just wrote post ume in the name of jesus there are some of you who the results you have seen now from that result you will not get anything serious i change that result now i change that result now i change that result now believe it you are too young to walk in unbelief i change that result now anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you're moving listen no i know our time is gone but i'm praying a very important prayer believers are careless and that's why sometimes we allow the devil take advantage of us i declare whether by air or by land whether on bike kekena pep if it will crash you will never enter it I say it again, if that vehicle is doomed for accident, then I take you out of it. But in the name of Jesus, if you enter it, then it must not crash. I pray for your finances again that in the name of Jesus, the worship team sang here and said, Ebenezer, there is a God that can help men. I pray for you directly finance that's the prayer i'm praying for you now i know you love god already i'm not doubting your passion for god but the resources that it will take especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the Lord I command your establishment now he said keep us lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil I pray for you any orchestration of evil a trap of Satan so that you will enter and it will destroy your life quarter to getting into that trap i declare in the name of jesus may the lord rescue you out of it two or three more prayers and we're done any friend in your life any useless association in your life that is not profiting you spiritually destiny wise financially I caught it from the realm of the spirit this night. I ate it out of your life in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, there is a saying, show me your friends and I will show you your destiny. Some of us love God, but the demon in our life is the spirit that keeps bringing the worst of every kind of friend. You are born again, but the people that come to like you to want to marry you are people who don't love God or you are a nice well-meaning brother but your friend is an arm robber your friend is a 419 your friend what any kind of wrong relationship whether you are aware or not in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to you let there be a separation right now And I pray for you, if there is any deceiver in your life, may my God expose them in this city. I know you don't like the prayer, but let me pray for you. If there is any deceiver in your life, I say it again, may the God of heaven expose them in this city. Whatever has tampered with your love for God, there is something called first love first love is fire fire for god 
fire for the house of God that they have to advise and encourage you now and say let us go he said I was glad not I was angry not I was dragging let me tell you if the passion for the house of God is dying in your life it's not a sign of spiritual growth it's a sign of an attack even if you think it's happening because you are a man of God that church they are not sharing anything that spirit is the spirit of the Antichrist I declare fresh passion for the things of God fresh passion for the house of God you used to wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is your Bible but now you wake up the first thing is your phone the first thing is email the first thing is uh, what they call all those things social media all those things you are doing and before you know it you spend one hour there you say let me just do it for five minutes you wake up by three o'clock and you say i will study my bible but quickly you watch nigerian film all kinds of things in the name of jesus those things are not bad don't get me wrong but i don't care whatever it is if it is as taking the position of god i declare let it return back to its rightful position let me rebuke the spirit of laziness before we share the grace because let me tell you i have seen people as a man of god and as a leader i have seen people who will never become anything listen nigerians and especially we around here let's trust god for grace to be serious when a young man is snoring your way you are sleeping you watch movie till 1 a.m and then you sleep till 11 a.m you are signing poverty with your destiny both god and satan agree that laziness leads to suffering are we together there are many of us here i, I don't hate you you know i love you with all my heart but your deliverance needs to be laziness 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 i'm not as concerned about our sisters but this our brothers you are the ones i'm talking to Sis, that doesn't mean that sisters should be lazy because some of you god is even speaking to you through this reduce those movies reduce all those facebook thing and all of that and sit down gentlemen receive grace grace to stay awake when others are sleeping <laughs> believers are lazy people and we just imagine that just because we have the anointing things will happen just like that if you are a man here and you are a married man please hear me and you know you are not catering for your family i love you but i'm telling you the truth by the word of god you are not being responsible no matter what the excuse is receive grace tonight to sit down and find out what do i need to do to feed my family let no man believer here born of god you return back home and there's no food and they are asking you and you are acting as if that they have no paid school fees say what will i do is irresponsible it's irresponsible before you have a child think and plan what are we going to do with this child that is coming not just that you give birth and then you start inconveniencing people in the name of jesus i declare the discipline to be diligent and the discipline to be responsible i release it upon you now every entitlement mentality that makes you believe someone somewhere should walk and just come and give you free success i cancel that wrong mentality now yeah. hallelujah we speak peace over zaria yeah. we speak peace over kaduna state yeah. and we speak peace over this nation yeah. We decree and declare that whether it's in the political or the economic sphere, we declare that Christ must be glorified in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for all of you who are doing one thing or the other, whether job, whether ministry, whatever it is, I declare multiplication of results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before we take the altar call, I want to encourage you, please listen, please listen. Everyone, next week, Friday, next week, we're going to have Koinonia on Sunday. It's, 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 it's our SOM graduation, we'll announce that shortly. But on Friday, please listen, we're all waiting upon the Lord, we're fasting, okay? 
there's no coin on here so we're going to trust god please when we say wait upon the lord minimum minimum at least minimum four o'clock if you fast and end by 12 except you are a child or except you are on a serious medical this thing if if you are not on a medical program and you fast and end by 12 i think you are lazy to whom much is given much is required six hours alone is too small you have to be serious and if you fast and all you do is sleep god too will have to forgive you because you didn't maximize is this not the fast i have commanded there is a fast that is hunger starvation but there is a genuine fast listen to messages so friday please uh, media make sure you announce it friday we are fasting and we are fasting the goal listen carefully three things number one our spiritual health are we together number two we're interceding for this ministry we're speaking the next level we're declaring we're praying over this ministry are we together now and then the third you can add whatever prayer point but particularly our spiritual lives and then you are praying for the ministry and you know prayer band take note of this and all other departments take note every department should allocate some time at least that you can pray hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.